Welcome to the video presentation on transportation and travel. My name is JC. I'm a master's student in maritime archaeology, and I'm here to go over the different traveling methods available to you during your time in Bournemouth. So what to expect in this presentation, we'll be covering walking, cycling, buses, trains, ferries, planes, and then ending at trips and tours. Starting with walking, Bournemouth is an amazing place to walk with lots of parks and beaches. You're safe to walk during the day, but I don't recommend that you walk alone at night. For that, you can either walk with a friend or you can take buses or taxi rides at night. Uh, be prepared for changeable weather. It is, after all, England. Most accommodations halls are close to each other, uh, and then there are some that are close to campus, except, of course, Corf House, which is where I'm living right now. Uh, don't recommend that you walk from there. If you want to, you are more than welcome to, but it'll take you about an hour and 45 minutes each way. Moving on to cycling now. Bournemouth is a very cycle friendly area. If you're looking to rent a bike, be you with Hope to Cycle have a scheme for students to have be able to rent bike at an affordable price. If you'd prefer to buy a secondhand bike, that's up to you, and that's there are some affordable ones out there. Uh, there are bike sheds in every residential hall as well as on both campus, and there's quite a few bike sheds also, I guess, around Bournemouth itself as well as the bike racks to lock your bikes up. Uh, biggest thing I need to remind you guys is don't forget to lock your bikes up, however. Uh, Talbot campus even has a changing room and a shower for you, so once you've biked to campus, you guys can use those. There's even a bike doctor that gets brought in to either Talbot campus or the Lansdowne campus every few months to do a free bike check. Moving on to buses now. There are three main types of buses that you will find around Bournemouth. You've got the Moore buses, which use your student card. Uh, and that basically covers you for zone A and zone B. So this isn't your student card that you would use with that has your picture. It is your student bus pass that you guys receive. Uh, then there is the yellow bus, which if you use your student card itself, you guys can pay the child rate. And the other buses is the uni buses. So that's the U1, the U2, and the U3 and 4. And these will bring you from the different student halls to campus. Then there's the buses that'll bring you across the UK. You've got the Wilts and Dorsets. So these will bring you to the various location, uh, such as Swanage, where you get to see the Jurassic Coast and Dirtle Door. Then you have the National Express. These will bring you all across the UK, as well as bringing you to and from the airports. There is usually a stop very close to the different accommodation halls as well. Moving on to the trains, the Southwest trains is the most popular trains that you will find in the UK, uh, and they'll bring you to a lot of low, uh, popular destinations. Uh, they'll also bring you to London, and then if you do decide to go to London, an easy way to travel is to use the tubes. If you want to use the tubes, you will, however, need to get an Oyster card, and there's a link there that you guys can click. Uh, just to register for an Oyster card and explain to you how it works. If you're wanting to go outside of the UK, there's the Eurostar. Uh, it's a fast train that'll get you to go from London to France or Belgium or Brussels, Germany and the Netherlands as well. If you are planning on taking a lot of trains, I do recommend that you download the Trainland app. It's really handy to have. I've used it since I got here. It's fantastic. Uh, here is just a list of the different time it would take to travel by train from Bournemouth. So you've got Oxford, London, Bristol, all the way to Paris using the Eurostar. Uh, as well in Bournemouth, you will have ferries. You either have the ferries that will bring you from around, in the around pool area, so like the Sandbank ferries. Uh, and the Brown Sea Island Ferry, which will bring you to Brown Sea Island. But you also have the Brittany Ferries, which will bring you to France if you want. And the Condor Ferries will usually bring you to the Channel Islands. 
moving on to the air travel. So you've got the two main airports that everybody knows about, Gatwick and Heathrow. Uh, these are very accessible. You can get there by bus or by train. The two closest alternative airports are Bournemouth and Southampton. However, they are fairly limited, uh, but they are ideal for getaways to, again, the Channel Islands if you want. Two websites that I highly recommend that you guys look at for affordable flights are the two links that I have right there at the bottom, uh, Student Universe and SG8 Travel. Last thing we're gonna be going over is the trips and the tours. So you guys can choose to join an organized trip if you want instead of planning it yourself if you're looking for something a little bit more relaxed. Subu has a lot of trips that they have and if ever Subu doesn't have anything you can take a look at Discover Dorset and Indigo Travel and they will bring you to places such as Dirtledore, Amsterdam, Paris, Edinburgh, you name it you can usually find it. Well that's it for me I hope you guys enjoy this presentation and I hope you guys to see you guys in September. Happy travels!